So last week, um, one of the icons of my childhood, Mr. Spock, passed away. And what you may not know is that um, uh, Mr. Nimoy uh, had COPD. And COPD is a disease, a chronic disease of the lungs. Um, and so today, we worked on the issue of COPD in honor of Mr. Nimoy. So our character is Charlie. Our character, so Charlie, he is also iconic. He's an amazing guy. He's really breaking the stereotypes with respect to COPD. He is an adventurer. He loves to be out in the open. He loves to ride his bike um, very, very long distances, which I could never do. And so we really want to help him to continue to do that. But one of the problems that he has is um, being unable to know when a flare-up may come. And um, so we're creating a solution for that. So, and flare-ups have serious consequences as well. They have serious consequences with respect to um, potential damages to his lungs. They also have um, monetary consequences with frequent ER visits. And so this is the solution that we've proposed. It's called Chronicare. And we're going to equip Charlie with sensors and mobile devices so that the healthcare team, the Chronicare healthcare team, can continuously monitor him remotely. And we're also integrating the Philips Health Suite as well as the Philips Smart Air Purifier um, in, our, uh, in our solution. So Charlie is constantly looking at his data and um, he keeps track of his health status as well as the environment. And so we're going to take a look at the demo uh, that we have prepared for you today. So right up, right up there now, we have the um, Apple Watch. We've optimized for the Apple Watch. And Charlie is getting an alert on his watch. And what he's seeing is that there's unhealthy air quality in his home. So he's going to take action um, by pressing a button on his watch. And so what he sees is the level of uh, uh, unhealthy air in his home, and he's just going to manually change the temperature as well as the fan. In the future, we'll be able to do this automatically based on his data using artificial intelligence. And so we're going to move on and take a look at his his um, app. And I wanted to say that all of this is optimized. We used the real um, emulator for the, the Apple Watch. We used the simulator for the iPhone. We have a Heroku-based ba Heroku um, database that we created, as well as a, a SDK that we created for the Fire, um, the Philips Fire. Yeah, this is ready to go live. <laughs> so here's the app. And he's going to take a look at his blood oxygen level right now. And he's going to see his oxygen saturation there. And that is also going to be viewed by the remote team that's monitoring his data and his health status. And so we're going to see the dashboard hopefully come up on the other side so that we can see the remote team looking at his data. So we created a dashboard as well. All right, and then we're going to go back to the app, and he's going to take a look at being able to share some of his data. Now, we're really privacy by design, so it's up to the patient as to what he wants to share. So if he wants to share it with a family member or with a caretaker, that's up to him. So he can share that, and or he, if he has an emergency that comes up or some problem, he'll be able to press that button and have a caretaker um, be alerted. And then you see that it also highlights the dashboard of the remote monitoring team. And there's the phone call to the caretaker. So that's our demonstration for you. And um, what we are providing to Charlie and other people with COPD is freedom, security, continuous care, as well as privacy by design. And we want them to all go boldly where no one else with COPD has been before. Thank you. All right.
All right, so for your team, Live Long and Prosper, is this the first time you've been working on the app yes. for the weekend? Yes, it the, is. Okay, first yeah, time. First time this team come together. That this team has come together and worked on the app. Okay, judges, go ahead. Hi, thank you for that nice presentation. Um, one of the other indicators is just work tolerance or tolerance to activity um, as an indicator of performance measure. So I was just wondering if you're also thinking of including um, heart rate or respiratory rate in addition to O2 saturation. We're using Apple Watch. So the Apple Watch has a heartbeat sensor and um, um, it also can track steps. So if you're doing exercises, uh, it can keep track of your activity level. That's great. Work yeah. tolerance would be helpful. Yeah, and of course, we would, we would like to use as much data as possible uh, because as we, as we move forward here for the, uh, for the uh, continuous care platform where we have, a, have a healthcare providers monitor the individuals 24-7, uh, over time, we would like to apply artificial intelligence algorithm on top of that based on uh, building a system that learn from the decision that the healthcare providers uh, take so that they can more and more focus on the things that really matter and get you know, uh, the, uh, not so important decision making automated. And I should note that we're primarily device agnostic. We're device agnostic. So I have an Alive Core. There are different things that we'll be able to use for the folks that we're working with depending on what their conditions are. This is um, to your team, but to the room as well. We've been really light on the privacy security issues around HIPAA today, um, but anytime you're interfacing with provider and provider recommendations, of course, that's gonna need to be addressed. So to multiple projects, but since you're up there right now, can you speak to us about your plans around that? Okay, I'm the a lawyer. Be, the data is gonna be uh, encrypted, so, um, so all the pri privacy concerns, um, if the data, so everything will be de-identified and aggregated and encrypted. And in addition, um, again, we're focusing on privacy by design. The, this is the patient's data. It's their data. Where, what they, they are able to just make a decision of how they want to share it. I understand the HIPAA concerns. So um, we will be always applying the um, regulations as we need to in any kind of um, development. Okay, thank yeah, you for the important, important add-on here, we have a lawyer on the team, and that is important for all this type of health uh, uh, projects to have uh, somebody that had that savviness with regulation and everything on the team. Right, so the de-identifying is a good point if you're going to do pop population work, but as soon as you ask a provider to give input on a specific person's data, if it's not a specific person, it won't be very helpful guidance. But so. Do pay attention to it, and I just would encourage people to make sure that they're considering that, and not to shy away from it, because it'll limit the functionality. Okay, thank you very much. That was a great thank presentation. Uh, one more question. Oh, yeah. uh, in terms of involving hospitals or healthcare professionals to help take this further, what are your thoughts on that? So our initial thoughts are um, with having a, we're really looking at a business model that's a little bit different. And the idea is to have a, a team of nurses or other healthcare professionals that are on the monitoring team. And so whether we want to share them with hospitals or to other, we're completely open with working with other doctors, working with hospitals um, and other organizations. Yeah, I think we're building something novel here. Imagine we're building, you know, kind of like uh, fully staffed uh, groups of healthcare providers that can sit, sit and monitor a uh, patient. We believe that this is a model to go forward for continuous care, to have healthcare providers working 24-7, looking all, over all this data, and then moving towards automation, applying artificial intelligence to make them more and more efficient so that these experts can really focus on the, 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 the places where they can make a difference, the things where, where, where real irregularities shows up in the patterns in the data. All right, time's up. Thank you Thank very you. much. All right, let's give a hand.